React Native Firebase AdMob is a package that allows you to place ads on your mobile application. We'll be having a look at how to set it up on iOS and Android, and we'll take a look at how to make sure that we can create an AdMob account as well in Google. With this, we'll create some ads in React Native, such as banner ads, video ads, reward ads, and I'll show you how it works. My name's Adrian, and I do videos around design and development, so if you haven't already, hit like and subscribe, and let's just jump straight into it. If you haven't heard of AdMob before, it's essentially a way to do ad monetization for your application and website. It's made by Google and it makes sure that the right ads are being placed in the right places to make sure that your application or website is being supported. The installation for the AdMob component is actually very easy in React Native. We simply go into the documentation and we follow this step to install the package. We're gonna run yarn add at React Native Firebase forward slash AdMob. Let's paste this into our project and hit enter, and this will install the dependency. Be aware that if you're on Android, you're gonna have to jump into your Google Play Store and make sure you update that your current application does contain apps. And this should be just under the pricing and distribution section. If you don't know where this is, you just head into your developer Play Store. You'll select an app that you wanna pick and you'll select store presence on the left and pricing and distribution. And in this section, you'll be able to select whether your application contains ads or not. Now, in order to get some ads on our application, we're gonna to have to set up Google AdMob by creating an account and setting up its configuration. After that, we can create some test ads and put them on our app to see how it works. We'll go to Google and we'll select to click on the AdMob website. In here, we'll sign up for a brand new account. And what we'll do is I'll just automatically sign up with one of my previous emails. We'll create a new account from this and we'll be able to see how we set up AdMob just in general. From here, I've got some basic information and I'm just gonna select create AdMob account. Once this is done, we'll go through the options here. And in this case, I don't really want any extra advertising. I just wanna create a new account. And that's done, so we can now get started. If it's your first time on AdMob, you'll have this screen here to get started. So we're gonna select that. We haven't got an app on the Play Store or the Google Store just yet, but we're gonna create a new one. So I'm gonna select no here. We're gonna give our app name a name, which is just Firebase in this case. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna select Android because this is what we're currently using. We'll select add here and this should get it up and running. We'll create the rest of the stuff a bit later, but for the time being, we'll have a look at this setting here, which is the ID we'll be using inside of our application. Let's select to create an ad unit. And in this case, we've got a couple of different choices here. We've got a banner, we've got a rewards platform, and we've got some other options too. For now, we'll simply click to close this section and we'll go back. And what we'll wanna do is create one more app. In this case, we'll want one for an iOS device. So we'll set up a new ad here and we'll select no. We'll set up Firebase once more, but this case we'll do it for iOS and we'll click add. This will generate a new ID that we'll be able to later use in our application and we'll select I'll do later in this case. Now we've got one for iOS and one for Android and we can have a look at the next steps. Be aware that if you are trying to load up a ad mob in your account and you're not using a valid ID, then it may cause your application to crash. So just make sure you double check that whenever you're building or running any applications. Now that we have these two IDs, what we're gonna do is create a firebase.json file, which we'll paste into the root of our project. This will be used later to reference the IDs that we're using for AdMob, whether it's on iOS or Android. So let's do this. Let's jump here into our project and we'll create a new file. And this file will be called firebase.json. In here, we'll copy over this placeholder syntax that we have. And what we'll have is an Android and iOS ID. We'll be able to grab this directly from AdMob. So over here, we've got our Android one. I'm gonna copy that over to clipboard and paste this in over here. And then I'm gonna go back in here and grab the iOS one. And this one I'm gonna paste here into the iOS section. And that part is now done. And finally, I'll just remove these comments here that are at the top of the file. Otherwise they might cause some bugs later on. Great, so I've saved that and we can move to the next part now. Since we've just installed AdMob as a new system, we're gonna have to make sure that it's properly set up for iOS. If you are on iOS, you'll need to browse into the iOS folder and run pod install, and then browse back out. 
To do this, we'll just jump into our project here. We'll cd into iOS and run pod install. But in my case, I'm running an Android, so I'm not going to need to do this. So I'm just going to cd back in and we can now re run our React Native application. To do this, in our case, we'll simply run npx react-native run-android. And this will start compiling and building and we'll see this in a second. We can now take a look at configuring up the settings for AdMob to use in React Native. So before we get started into creating some actual ads on our application, we're going to have to configure AdMob and we're going to do this by importing it into our React Native project and setting up the type of audience we're going to deliver ads to, whether they're children or adults or whatnot. So we're going to do this by importing AdMob as well as some other settings here from at React Native Firebase forward slash AdMob. What we're going to do is jump into our project over here and load up app.js. In here, we previously created AdMob with analytics, but in this case, what we're going to do is set up AdMob and put the AdMob configuration here in the did component mount section. Once we have this, we're passing in also a max ad content rating, which we'll be setting here as PG. The rest of the sections here like target ads for children, treatment true and tags under age consent is also true. So these are just making sure that we're compliant with regulations like COPPA to make sure that our ads are showing up properly. Be aware that if you're in Europe and you need to provide European user consent, then you'll have to do this separately. AdMob comes without any pre-existing configuration, but they do provide modules such as the ad consent helper, which will allow you to do this. We're finally done setting up and installing AdMob. We've configured it both outside of the application and inside, and we can now start using it. It's pretty simple. We're just going to import some of these scripts here to create a banner ad. And we're going to import this here at the top of our project. Then we can create React components for this. In this case, we'll create a test banner ad and we'll paste this into our application. I'm just going to put this straight above our work. Welcome to React Firebase project. The only other thing that is of note here is we're passing in a unit ID and this is a test unit ID we're currently putting in. But later on, when you create your own ads, you can put in your own IDs. And finally, we'll also need to make sure that we set up a size. So to do that, we're going to import the sizing settings over here and we're going to get some pre-made size for the banner ads. In this case, what I want to be able to do is create a banner size of maybe large or something like that. So we'll pass in size here and let's double check what the syntax is for that. In this case, we just pass in a size of full banner. So let's put that in here as a prop. Hit save and that should apply. We should see our ad load up any second now and that way we're up and running with AdMob in React Native. AdMob also provides other types of ads we can apply such as display ads which might take up the full screen. These are called interstitial ads and they're very useful. You've probably seen them before where you play a video on the full screen or you have a call to action where you download a different application. Let's have a look at how we can apply one of these. We're going to import a interstitial ad here from React Native Firebase forward slash AdMob. We're going to set a unit ID and we're going to select some keywords, in this case, fashion and clothing. We've got an example here of one that is already ready to use. So we're going to copy this over and put this into our code. Now for our code here, we're going to have to change up a little bit how it works. In this case, we're going to import it here above. But what we're going to do is reuse some of these components that we have used. So for example, I'll remove import react native. So we'll just import use effect and use state for our hooks. We've got a button here and I might have it previously set somewhere. Yep, we've already set that previously. So we'll remove that. Interstitial ads are already set as well, as well as test IDs. The rest of the configuration essentially looks fine. Let's take a look at how it works. I'm going to rename this function add button, app button. And what we're doing is setting a hook here with a use effect. This will load the interstitial ad when we select the button and we'll be able to close it as well. Here's the button that'll cause that effect. And I'm going to just put this right above our banner ad. So let's create a new line item here with our component and save that. It should appear just here. And when we select this button, the full screen ad just plays, which is great. 
Of course, this type of ad is only very generic. It only has a single picture. If we want something that has a bit more interactivity, we'll need to do things like reward ads, which will actually play videos. So let's take a look at the syntax to create one of these. We've got some syntax here ready to go. And in this case, we'll be importing a reward ad with a reward ad event type. Let's pull in the syntax. I'm going to replace the button we created earlier with this new one. So what we'll do is we'll just go down here and we'll remove all the syntax and replace it with this new button. I'll call this app button once more, but it should work fundamentally the same way. Let's just make sure we're not recalling the same events here. So here we are going to remove this and we'll just save that. That should essentially work. Now here we have a reward ad. And when we select this button, we can see that a video plays with the reward in this case. We've got a small timeout at the top right there, which we can close off. Otherwise, we can just close off the ad and we're back to our screen. And finally, we have banner ads. And these are the ones we've already looked at at the very start. The main difference here is the options or props that we pass through to make them work a little bit different. In this case, the size is probably one of the most important. We've got a few different sizes here. For example, we could do the banner ad with a size of banner. And in this case, it'll be a little bit smaller. We'll be able to see that. And that way it exists as a small little item there. Or we could do a fluid design. And this essentially should resize to the size of the device a little bit better. In this case, we haven't really set a device size for this fluid banner, so it's not going to really take in any size. We also have full banner, which we already tested at earlier and uses up the full width of the screen. If it's a little bit too big, it might not look very good, but you'll have to play around with that. We also have a large banner here, and this is the one we started off with. We can see that it fits in quite well. We have a leader belt board one, and this is quite wide. I'm not sure if we can apply this without having a wide screen, so in this case, it's not really loading up. We've got a medium rectangle, and this is what it essentially looks like. It uses up quite a lot of room, especially on a mobile device. We've got a smart banner, and this uses up the full width and auto height. So let's see what that looks like. We'll save this, and we can see that it's just randomly up at the top right. So it might need a little bit of styling in this case. Finally, we've got the wide skyscraper, and I'm not too sure how this will come out. I assume it'll just be very wide. Uh, yes, it is, and it seems to be using up as much room as it can there, with almost 600 pixels in height. Anyway, those are some of the different sizes, but you can see how you can implement these depending on what you're doing in your application. I'm going to be doing more videos around React Native Firebase, so if you guys are interested, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.